Hi, I'm Danny Curtin. Thank you for joining me today. Body weight is a serious health concern in the United States, as we are by far the fattest nation. According to the CDC, 73% of U.S. adults are overweight, which includes a staggering 42% of adults that are considered obese, which means weight loss as an industry will continue to grow and grow and grow. With that in mind, imagine an easy to take drug administered just once a week that allowed you to shed 10, 20, or 30 pounds of excess body weight, maybe even more, in just a few short months without having to make any changes to your diet or activity level. That sure sounds like the answer so many have been waiting for, especially for the millions of people that feel like they've tried everything, but have always been unable to lose weight. This drug would not only produce weight loss, but you'd also benefit by lowering your risk of cardiovascular disease, joint pain, stroke, and even diabetes. Sound too good to be true? Well, for some, it could be, as new research indicates severe gastrointestinal side effects may be associated with the use of these drugs. Since about 2010, millions of diabetics have been managing their blood sugar levels with several drugs just like this, and significant weight loss was eventually noted as a beneficial side effect. With so many diabetics losing weight, doctors began to prescribe these drugs off-label for their patients that had weight issues but were not necessarily diabetic. Even more recently, newer, slightly updated versions of these drugs have gained massive popularity. Brand names you may have heard of, like Ozempic, Wegovi, and Ribelsis, have been used by both diabetics and non-diabetics for blood sugar management, as well as quick, effective weight loss. Many diabetics haven't been able to get these drugs because demand has been so high. The buzz and excitement created by these drugs about getting healthier and losing weight is easy to notice. But are users getting the full story on the safety of these drugs and what they do to your digestive system and the rest of your body? Well, let's jump in and take a closer look. Under normal digestive conditions, when we eat sugar or foods that turn into sugar, it goes into our bloodstream. Our bodies then release a hormone called glucagon-like peptide, normally referred to as GLP-1. This hormone prompts our pancreas to release insulin, which then tells our cells to absorb all the sugar in the bloodstream. Now, if our pancreas doesn't make enough insulin, or if our cells ignore the insulin's message, sugar stays in the bloodstream. And over time, this extra sugar gets stored as fat. So you can see, with improper insulin production or an improper response to insulin, our bodies will not efficiently burn sugar, which will lead to fat accumulation and weight gain. Now, this is why medications that support this process are gaining so much attention for weight loss. Brands like Ozempic are approved for diabetes, but are being prescribed off-label, while others, like Wagovi, have been specifically approved for weight loss. Either way, all of these drugs are considered GLP-1 agonists, and they use the same generic drug called semaglutide, which first received approval from the FDA in 2017 as a treatment for type 2 diabetes. Now, semaglutide reduces blood sugar levels by mimicking the aforementioned GLP-1 hormone, which stimulates the production of more insulin. Not only does the increase in insulin support the normal processing of sugar in the bloodstream, but when levels of this hormone increase, users feel full, and they typically stop eating or eat much less. Semaglutide also slows down digestion, which adds to the feeling of being full for longer periods of time. But sadly, there's no such thing as a biological free lunch, as adverse reactions and side effects are now beginning to rear their ugly heads. Most users have never familiarized themselves with the list of both common and rare adverse effects. The sad thing about pharmaceuticals is that once they are approved, most people are not fully warned about the potential side effects, and doctors largely brush off these side effects as rare. Symptoms such as nausea, cramps, vomiting, and diarrhea can be found on the drug insert and online, and for some, this would probably be enough to steer clear of these drugs. But now, it's easier than ever to find the adverse events associated with semaglutide as the first large-scale study was just published on the use of semaglutide for weight loss. 
This new research suggests that these drugs could increase the risk of serious gastrointestinal conditions. Some of the less severe symptoms can include nausea, vomiting, and feeling very full quickly after eating. Nausea and vomiting are bad enough, but some users have experienced food that is not digested for days. They've also experienced severe heartburn, self-described rotten egg breath, painful constipation, uncontrollable diarrhea, and depression. Now, these nasty symptoms are associated with a condition called gastroparesis, best described as stomach paralysis. This condition hinders the stomach's nerves and muscles from moving food out of the stomach and into the small intestine. The drugs were also linked to an increased risk of pancreatitis and bowel obstruction. Is easy weight loss worth the risk of developing a potentially irreversible condition where the stomach cannot properly empty? Well, the FDA has acknowledged the reports of gastroparesis associated with drugs like Ozempic and Wagovi. However, they also emphasized that the potential benefits of these medications might outweigh the risks for certain patients. Hmm. Although we are told adverse events are rare, there have been some very sad stories in the news lately. One of these stories comes from Emily Wright, a 38-year-old teacher in Toronto. After about a year on Ozempic, she lost 80 pounds, which she's been able to keep off. But Wright said she now vomits so frequently that she had to take a leave of absence from her job. She said, quote, Not only was I vomiting, but I began having burps that smelled so strongly of sulfur and rotten eggs that the kids began to ask where that smell was coming from. And now I've been off Ozempic for almost a year, but I'm still not back to my normal self. If I could today sit here and tell you that I was 100, 280 pounds again, but I wasn't sick, I would be happy. In another use case, Joni Knight remembers exactly what she ate on her birthday two years ago. After a couple of bites, she felt panic set in when she couldn't swallow her food. And soon after, she began to vomit violently. Knight said, quote, it felt like it was stuck in my throat. I thought, I hadn't really eaten. How am I throwing up this much? Knight had been taking Ozempic for two years at that point and was already eating very little every day as a result. After the birthday episode, she went to see a gastroenterologist who put a tube with a camera down her throat and into her stomach to see what the issue might be. They told her, quote, your stomach is full of food. Knight now says she has gastroparesis and she is nauseated all the time. No matter how little she eats, she says, quote, I take a prescription nausea medication like it's candy. Now, when reviewing the most recent research, semaglutide users had three times more nausea, twice as much diarrhea, they were four times more likely to suffer from chronic vomiting, meaning they would vomit at random during the trial, and they were more than twice as likely to be constipated compared to a placebo. And if you've ever had surgery, you know that you typically have to fast for at least 24 hours prior to the procedure. Doctors are now warning that those who take semaglutide have a much higher risk of regurgitating food during surgery, since food is in the digestive system for so long, which can lead to aspiration and possibly dangerous complications like pneumonia. All of these findings are alarming, especially considering the widespread use of these medications. In 2022, the number of people in the U.S. using these types of drugs for diabetes or obesity reached 40 million. Whoa. Now, managing weight is not only a very personal experience, but it can be very difficult, especially since there are so many factors that influence weight. In my opinion, pharmaceutical solutions like Ozempic have their place. However, for most people, nature offers extremely effective options that don't carry any of the same risks. So, if you're serious about losing or maintaining a healthy weight, there are a few key factors that may make the process a bit easier. One thing that is often overlooked for both men and women is hormone balance. If your hormones are not at optimal levels, it won't matter what you do. Weight loss will be next to impossible. Having your thyroid levels checked as well as estrogen, testosterone, DHEA, and other sex hormones by a natural practitioner can make a big impact on maintaining a healthy weight. 
Also, anything you can do to improve your blood sugar levels and insulin sensitivity will also make the process much easier. Remember, sugar that stays in the bloodstream without being absorbed turns into fat. Now, speaking from personal experience, over the past two decades, I have found that having my hormones and thyroid checked regularly and also monitoring my blood sugar levels has exponentially impacted my ability to maintain a healthy weight. I primarily suggest you get your digestion in order by avoiding problem foods that you know are upsetting your system, like gluten or dairy products. You may even want to take a food sensitivity test. These are easy to order and take from the comfort of your home. If your digestive system is inflamed and you're not regular, your metabolism will suffer. In regards to this video topic, I recommend supplements that are helpful in maintaining a healthy insulin response. When your blood sugar is balanced, weight loss results won't be temporary, which is typically what happens when stimulants or appetite suppressants are used. However, before you take anything specific for this area, Vitamin D and magnesium sufficiency is essential for normal insulin and blood sugar levels. So many of us are deficient in at least one of these essential nutrients, so make sure you're taking adequate levels of vitamin D and magnesium before you add anything additional. But once you've got all that covered and you want to go even further, I specifically recommend berberine. Studies have shown that berberine can improve insulin sensitivity, which will prevent excess sugar from turning into fat. There are other ingredients like cinnamon, certain probiotic strains, and a few other for metabolic support that may have some value. I'll leave a few different formulas that I like in the description below. So to recap, in my opinion, Ozempic, Wegovy, and the rest of the semaglutide drugs have their place but it's crucial for potential users to be aware of the risks, especially if they don't have a disease and are simply looking for weight loss benefits. Open communication between you and your doctor is essential so that you can be sure that the benefits truly outweigh the potential risks. Again, this is simply my personal opinion, but comfortable digestion is essential when it comes to quality of life. Think about how you feel when you have a stomach ache or a stomach bug that causes nausea. Now, Imagine having those symptoms because you took a drug that you thought was safe. For many, those symptoms don't go away months and even years after use. And with so many options available, trying everything else first may be the best option for you. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like it and share it with your friends and family. If you'd like to watch another educational video, click right here. Again, I'm Danny Curtin. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.